Um, I come here to thank you for having us on your territory and your land today to be able to share a story with you through our dance. Uh, I, I come from a chief, Tahiri, who also had this in his box, my grandfather. And he, he seen it as a little boy, but he was never allowed to dance it because it was outlawed. And so today, when I dance it, when we dance it, 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 it's like we're entering into the world of our ancestors. And so the story of the Eklakima, I'll just briefly tell you a short version of it as it's very long. Um, the Eklakima is the spirit of the forests. They're like ghosts. And everything around us in the forest we respect and we honor. You'll see all the different types of living things that come from our forest and how we respect it and we want to maintain it that way. The story, this story, particular story of the Klakima, where a young boy was really mistreated by his father, Chief Tzahidi. The young boy's name was Kwapabalas. And he was really mistreated by his father. And he knew his mother came from on the other side of the mountain. So he took off from his father's land. He says, I want to go see my mother's land. And it was up over the mountain. And it was the Awikinuk people, our neighbors of the Kwakwakiwauk. They were just on the other side. And so Kwakwabalas left. And when he left, he followed this river up the mountain. He came across this beautiful lake. And then he started seeing somebody in the corner of his eye. And that somebody kept, when he fell asleep, that somebody came and whispered in his ear, you need to go bath in this lake. I want you to bath first thing in the morning in this lake. And when you bath, you face the four directions of the earth, north, south, west, east. And you give thanks for everything that you have. So he did. Ne the next morning, the next night, he seen somebody else. He moved out further down the lake and he seen somebody else and it was a different man. And he, he ran into this man and that man says, I need you to bath in this lake one more time. For what you're looking for, you won't find until you're spiritually ready. Because we won't allow ourselves to show ourselves to you until you're spiritually ready and connected. And so this young boy, throughout the four nights, and our number is four, we're sacred, our sacred number is four, we do everything in fours. And so when Guacubalas, on his fourth night, this, this little mouse woman came to him. And her name was Hila Molaga. Hila Molaga told him the story. If you want to obtain this, this power and the right to use this, that we're, what, we're, what we're about to show you, you have to bath four days in this lake to wash the human smell off of you so the spirits don't hear you or smell you. You cannot be a human being to see these things. And so Guacabalas bathed four days, four mornings in a row. On his fourth morning, he came out, and that's when Hila Molaka, little mouse woman, she was the interpreter from the two worlds that we live in, the spirit world and this world that we have here. And so Hila Molaka told him the story, what I need you to do when I bring you into that great big house, full with all the four spirits in it. You cannot say anything. You just sit there quietly and watch. They can't know you're in there because they won't show their true selves. So for you to sit there quietly and not smell like a human and do what you're told, you'll obtain that gift. And you can bring it home to your people. And it'll be yours. And so, Kwakwabalas listened to Hila Molaka, the last, the last person that was to visit him. And she, 
she took him to this great house where all these animals would come out one by one by the collars. So when you see these, the two dancers that are going to be here, the first one is the grouse. The grouse comes out kind of paranoid, looking around, doesn't make, making sure nobody's around. And he comes out all like kind of skittish and scared. He's got a rattle. And then he kind of goes around making sure there's nothing there that's going to hurt any of his people, his spirits. So he comes out and he's the leader of this. So he, he's just making sure he's, he's looking after his, his spirits, his animals. So he goes in and then he grabs the spruce. The spruce tree has these great roots in our forests. And these roots are so strong and so connected, it makes us all one. The spruce comes out, pull like this, with hands out like this, making a noise, and they come out. And that person, that spruce, is the one that's gonna come back each time with the grouse to pull each animal out one at a time. So the spruce, the roots that we grow deep in our forests and in our territories and our land is very sacred. We're connected to everything. You're gonna see a mask that has moss on the side of it because that's a living thing. That's something that we have to respect. You're gonna see the rainmaker, the great rainmaker. And we're connected to these. And so when everything started coming out, and Guacuabalas, this young man who was mistreated by his father, when he came and he watched, he couldn't believe how beautiful this was. And tonight, you're only going to see maybe not even just a quarter of it. In the old, old, old ways of our people, there was 40 pieces to this mass, to these, this kingdom. 40 pieces. And tonight we're showing nine. nine. So you're getting a little glimpse. But in our big house, it, it is, this is a very big deal for us. Because it is true. Only certain families own this. Only, and, and a lot of what our people did was uh, we had marriages. That dowry, we would marry. There were arranged marriages. Our people had arranged marriages. And it was for dances like this. This is why they were arranged so that the chief could obtain a dance like this. So not every family has the same treasure box, but the marriages is what, it's the women that bring everything over to the men that make the men. So the, the women hold all the rights and they bring it over to the man. And my grandfather used to say to me, behind every great chief, there was a whis woman whispering in his ear. But tonight we're going to show this little part of it. It's not, you know, it, it, it's just a little small part of our culture. And it's, it's very rare that we dance this outside of the big house. So it, it, it's uh, a little bit different to get orientated with jet lag and everything. So just bear with us. But it is, it is a beautiful place. And I really want to uh, gila kesla for, for allowing us to be here tonight. It's always our tradition to thank the people that are hosting us and to make sure that we respect your ways as well. Gila Kessa, I'd like to introduce you to my Gwilis, my brother-in-law, Chief Alan Hunt. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for coming. So just as we lead into the ceremony, we're going to bless the space a little bit and all of you and settle the energy in the room and kind of uh, start fresh, as it were. And, and to spread some down is uh, a protection to everybody. So we'll start with that and then we'll roll into the Atlakima.
can't keep them up while we turn. And the door. So some things that we missed in the beginning. So what you saw in the very front here was the door, the gateway, as we probably have deduced. And uh, he would spin open as each character is brought from you know, the spirit world, from under the ground, and uh, then spin back the other way once they're here. And then when the dancers were entering and then exiting, you'll notice we all do a left-hand turn. And that is because this space is supernatural. It becomes the spirit world. So we're leaving this realm with a left-hand turn and entering the spirit world to do our work, to do our prerogatives. And when we are done, we enter back into this world. So that's a little bit of context on, on that. And, and the same, you know, the left-hand principle uh, applies for our people very deeply. We, we only go this way around the fire. Um, yeah, it, it, it follows the rotation of the sun um, is how we do that. And, you know, four is sacred to us. You know, we have the elements, we have the directions, we have the house posts that are in a big house. You know, it's, uh, it's a very sacred number for us. It's a nice round number. <laughs> And uh, so that was the Atlakima, uh, or a very small portion of it. And uh, we have a few other treasures to share as well. Um, so we'll see how we're, how we're doing. about earlier is that you know indeed the men will hold the chieftainships and we may be the head but the women are the neck so behind every great chief is a, a greater woman um, you know we you know there's a lot of kind of confusion between patrilineal and patriarchal matrilineal and, and matriarchal and things like this and the water tends to get very muddy but we we hold our women in extremely high regard um, they're the conduits through which all of the wealth flows you know I I received this seat from my grandfather but he got it from his mother who got it from her mother's brother who got his dowry through his wife so we can see that even though, you know, the way things flow, it's, there's honor on both sides. And, uh, you know, everybody benefits from this. It's not, dowry is not a chief's personal gain. That is so that the children, the resultant children, have a connection to their mother's house still. We don't overlook that. We don't uh, stomp on that. They have a place somewhere else. And we respect that. You know, we all have names from different houses. You know, we were um, just in Fort Rupert alone, you know, there were many clans. And, you know, if we look only at my bloodline, I have blood from Alaska to Campbell River in BC. Um, and a name from each one of those houses, and it brings me up to a nice round number of 10. Um, so no matter whose potlatch I walk into, I have identity, I have standing, I am, I'm recognized by them as a member of the family. As you grow, you receive more names. When, when you are first born, you have a baby name, and then you get your first dance name, and then you get a grown-up everyday name, and, and so on and so forth, and you kind of graduate through society as a, a contributing member. What are you, Pa? Yeah.
Hamatzah. Um, so that is after. Okay, a short version of the story. Um, the, the, the princess of a chief has gone missing, and her brothers go out in search of her. And where they find her is Bach Bach Balanuxiwe's house, and that means the man eater at the north end of the world. And they come across his big house in this giant open field, and there's blood red smoke coming out of it. Um, and they're not able to free their sister. <coughs> But she says, I will help you to defeat Bach Bach Walanuxiwe, and you will get his treasures. So they trick him. They lead him back to their village. You know, uh, he chases them back to their village, uh, where they alert their father, and a large hole is dug and filled with hot rocks. And then they put a cedar mat over it. Bach Bach Walanuxiwe is 40 feet tall, and he's covered in mouths. Um, he's quite a, a scary looking creature, uh, so, um, so, but he's very vain. Uh, so he comes crashing through the trees, and lo and behold, the entire village, they start clapping, hey, you know what I mean? Come sit at the, the seat of honor, we're going to have a feast. And into the pit he goes, this man-eater, and up from his burning body came mosquitoes. Aha. So that um, is the tame comma. After he's been exercised of that man eating spirit. Tala. He also belongs to the Bapa Kolanuxiwe uh, society. So within our within our, our ceremonies, we have societies that look after one another. And Nutsis Tala is the fire dancer. Obviously, we, he didn't go towards it because it's not lit tonight. <coughs> I don't think the hall would appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, it's, the fire is a very, very sacred element to our people. It, uh, it, it's it's uh, that, that man that you just witnessed dancing, is it, his spirit is connected to that fire, and he's the keeper of our fire. So he, he, he's just showing appreciation to it, giving thanks. So he's um, also connected to the seagull, hey? Yeah. The seagull, the seagulls in 
our area are connected to our Nutsis Tala, the fire. They get so, they get so um, amazed by the fire. The seagulls do that, they sacrifice themselves and they fly down into our fire. And that Nutsis Tala is the one that's connected to the seagull and the fire. So that's him. And so he belongs to Papa Kola Nuxiwe as well, the cannibal spirit of the north end of the world, which we call the north end of the world in BC. So um, Papa Kola Nuxiwe had a whole slew of, of servants, the big birds, the big cannibal birds, uh, the crooked beak of heaven, the raven. Um, there's four, and, and, and the hook. And uh, so anyways, he would send those birds out and to, to, go get, uh, to go get corpses, people to eat. So the birds would go and go to villages and, and steal. Because these birds are giants. They're not just human sized. These are big, massive birds that come in. And, they, and we have them. We, we, we reenact, when a chief potlatches, we reenact, reenact the whole thing. And you cannot stop the ceremony once it started, you, once, once the Bapakola Nuxiwe ceremony has started and that society is on the dance floor, we have to carry that out until the last one of that society is done. And then we could have a break and maybe feed the people. But that's the biggest thing for us, is to make sure that our people eat, our guests, because our guests are the one that are validating who we are within our, within our tribes, within our ceremonies. It's our guests that validate us. And they're there to witness what we have. And so each, each family usually has what you're seeing today, the, just the Hamatsa, the Hiligela, the, the Hatain Hamatsa, and um, the Nutsi Stala of Fire. And then after that is the Kumi Nawaga. She was on the floor in the mask, actually, Kumi Nawaga. She was a rich woman. And she was the butcher of Papa Kola Nuxiwe. So she would butcher up the corpse, the bodies, and then but Macaulay Nuxiwe was really mean to her. He, he treat, mistreated her so badly, but she was faithful to him. And she stayed faithful to him. And in the end, he made her a rich woman. And that's why she was dancing like this, going, I, 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 because she's now, yeah, she's now past all the abuse that she had put up with Bob Macaulay Nuxiwe. And then you have the Lelutlak, which is the ghost. And, in the beginning, in the beginning of our, our Akakima ceremony, you seen a ghost come out. That first lady that came out in the gray blanket was a ghost, and she was calling all our spirits out. She was the very first one to open up our ceremony, the Akakima. And when we all came out without our masks, we danced like this, and it's because we're, re we're, we're resembling ghosts. You can't see our faces. We're our faces are gone. We're not human form. So that's why we go dance like this. And all our, all our songs have meaning to them. You could see some of us moving our hands to the words that he was singing. We're sharing our greatness with you. Jachia, like we're, is that translate to you? Yeah, like we're spraying our medicine over you to wish you well. So just some little bit of background on some of it here. It would take at least a year to explain all of it to you, but there's <laughs> some of it. And this is all important because we didn't have a written language. This is why we potlatch. All our history is oral. So this looks like a show, but we don't clap in the big house. We're not putting on a show. We're telling our story. And, you know, everything, it's, it's like a hive mind, as long as you know your name and who had it before you and so on and so forth, our entire history is covered. We all know it. If everybody's got their piece, then we have a picture. So that is why the guests get paid. You're paid to, to go home and tell your village what you saw, the names that you heard. And that is how the history has carried on. And if we think about it, the names that we're standing here holding have been remembered without a pen and paper for thousands of years. It was only, when did the Umista put letters? Uh, in the 80s. The 80s. We had, 
we have a written language for 30 81. years. 81. 1981 was written. It's been very long ago. <laughs> and that's a testament to how deep underground we went when they tried to make, make us illegal. So... Uh, the next ads, usually after Bakola Lucy Way, has, has um, made his presence on the floor. Your side. We your side. The women come and cleanse it now. So the women come out and share their power and cleanse the floor because Baba Kola Nuxiwe was a cannibal spirit that infected people. And so the women were so powerful amongst our people that they come and they, they make it right. They make it more elegant, graceful. And you will see them collecting energy. The fire connects us to the cosmos and they will be a conduit. So the way that their hands are, they're sharing that with everybody.
Well, that song belonged to my great, great grandfather. Um, and now I guess it's mine. Yeah, there's the star of the show right there. So we're going to close out with a fun dance, which is, uh, you know, when we potlatch, sometimes they can be two, maybe even three days. Um, you know, with pretty late nights, uh, sometimes it gets a little bit ridiculous. I've been at a potlatch that started, you know, nine in the morning on Friday, and we were there until 3 a.m. Saturday, that kind of thing. Um, so it's nice at the end just to get everybody up, get a little bit of blood flowing. You know, the songs are generally pretty upbeat, and, you know, we give away a little bit of gifts, and everybody gets to hoot and holler around. Feel free to yell, clap, hoot, you know, whoop, whatever you want. You know, it's, it's fun. We're going to ask you if you're comfortable enough to come join us again. Yeah, and, you know, members of our delegation may try and just pull you right out of your chair. Uh, you don't have to, but... <laughs> it, it, it gets our law. It would be rude, though. <laughs>